back one and all to Worlds 2023. We're having a little bit of a dance there in the break music. The song's been sick. Yeah, it's I mean, so good. <laughs> let's be real. Loud, louder having a bit of a song and dance after that one as well. They would, want to be. they would want to be. Impressive <laughs> as all hell. Like, very, very cool to see what the CB Law is bringing to the world stage right now. Like, Pentakill, game one, day one. No, Pentakill, get to see that. multiple solo kills for the AD carry. Like, Root was just the, the catalyst of everything, and he did not disappoint. And I really do feel like he, it, that is a problem now for Gam in the second game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what do you, it's like, oh, well, I guess we either got to pick away the Kaisa this time, or do we ban the Kaisa? Like, is it actually that strong? Yeah. But look, I it kind of also came back to, like, don't mess up your level one. Yes. Like, the level one, level two went so disastrously for them, they just couldn't recover. And that's kind of what we got to see Root pop off. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that was the big thing as well. So that level one, level two, where they almost got the damage there onto Rouge. And then, in fairness, they were so close on the side of Gaon to make it work for themselves. But then it goes the opposite way. They lose all their summoners. They don't gain the kill for it. And it just all kind of snowballed from there. We are going to have a switcheroo on the sides. It is going to be Gam on the blue with Loud on the red. And we're going to start to see a couple of these things now. And it looks like Tinones just does not want to deal with the Trisana at all. He wants to get rid of that 100% of the time. Yeah, I'm surprised to still see them putting that much priority onto getting that away. And um, definitely something that's fallen off as of late, but we'll have to see exactly what the game plan is. Jack's going to be taken away from Kiai as well, which I still think is a good call. And honestly, we're seeing very, very similar stuff to what we saw in the last game. It hasn't been too different or too dissimilar from uh, game number one, apart from the side selection. All right. Let's see what they want to go for right now. The Olaf, obviously, can be a bit of one. I don't have Adam right now, but uh, we'll see him later on in the uh, in the tournament, especially uh, with maybe may have a little bit more of that one there. But the Nico being taken away by Tanones, again, he wasn't the highlight of everything, but he definitely was a facilitator of the whole thing. The Nico just feels like it's still super strong. Yeah, it definitely is. And I think, like, as we said, control mages kind of tend to be the ones on top in the mid lane at the moment. So, Nico, your Orianas, I think Azir is still very, very popular. Syndra as well. Don't forget, Tin owns a massive fan of that pick. Even represented him in one of the old CB Law videos as well. Like, this is a guy that loves that pick, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it brought out over the course of Led's tenure here at the World Championship. We'll see. For now, it looks like it's going to be... A little bit of a swap up in that top side. Kiaia taking himself the Renekton. I still think the Renekton is such an exceptionally powerful pick. It can be so easily blind picked because we've seen it. It's just, again, even when you pick the Rumble and stuff into it, it still can scale. It can still become that mid game monster. And you just, there's not a lot of great answers to it. Yeah, and I think that's kind of what the biggest problem is. Like, we've seen things from, like, BB and stuff like that, like bringing out the Swain and those kind of things to try and have an answer into it. But I don't think we'll see Robo go towards something like that. Could be potentially an Aatrox or something along those lines that he wants to go towards. We'll have to see exactly what the game plan is. Zaya going to be the first one coming through for Roots. They're not going to go back towards the Kai'Sa. And do we get the Orianna tick? Are we just going to swap, essentially, what these first three picks are? Quite possibly right now. I do feel like Loud... Could go for the Oriana themselves. They could also pick up the Rakan. Did exceptionally well in that last game for Seos. He was really proactive on it. And it does feel like it is the premier support, at least in my eyes, in the first few games we've seen so far this tournament. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to call at the moment. Yeah, it looks like it would be the Kron. Because I felt like the game was so skewed by Loud in the early stages. It became very hard to kind of see much from either team. So when you look towards, hey, maybe we want to take a jungle because we want to get a good jungle matchup, it was like, we saw the damage that was done by the junglers, like less than 4K on either side. Like they weren't a big factor. So I think it's kind of a dip bit difficult to take things away from that last game on either side, but looks like I'm going to go towards a much more aggressive play. So taking the Rel, taking the Kai'Sa, Rel can still sw swap into the jungle, but definitely, hey, we want to go forward. We want to try and take these fights, but Kind of good answers from Loud at the moment. Zaya to peel for herself. Now an Oriana going to come through as well. Like, this is still dangerous territory here for Gam. I'm loving the smiles we're seeing from the Loud players as well. You can see them there kind of going, yeah, this looks good. This feels yeah. good right now. And they know, and again, it's a great ball delivery system for the for the Oriana as well with the Rakan. He goes straight in on top of people, charms them up so they can't yeah. just get away straight away. You get that nice little animation out of the way from the Shockwave. So we'll see where they want to try and bring this one here. But for the moment, both teams kind of have a solo laner, but we should see some more bands into that top lane here from the side of Gam. Yeah, I think there's also ways to try and facilitate the Zorian even more. Jarvan being the one that you could go for for Croc here, that's not taken away. Neither side has actually selected a jungler just yet, but Led will have first rotation on that. So I'm curious exactly what they want to try and go for. And maybe even just look for a counter pick in the jungle, to be perfectly honest. Like, you can go for your answer to the Renekton, keep that jungler for last, unless you just want to put high priority on towards the Jarvan and be in that game setup as well. Yep, well, there's the Rumble being banned away there. I wouldn't be surprised to maybe see a Cassante banned away here by the side of Gam if they really want to try and focus in on that. Or if they don't see it as a big of a problem, they could maybe ban away the Jarvan themselves. Be a Jax ban as well coming Jack's through. Jax's already I mean, banned. 
Oh, true, yeah, first rotation. So that's kind of what, like where my head's at is like, are there carries that Robo can try and take into this matchup? But the Olaf taken out of his hands as well. Like you're kind of having that pool pinched. Is a Darius player, but not sure if he really wants to try and bring that out with the, the current setup. Although with the way Gam have been playing and with the way their setup is, the hyper engage that they're going to go for and the low dives that they're going to, low range dives they're going to be going for could be an angle to go towards the Darius. Yeah, well, there's the Jarvan, so that's not going to be, as I say, an even easier kind of setup for them. So Jarvan and Rumble not going to be the combos in. I will say both of those picks in this comfort layout could have been huge, but maybe we see our first Lee Sin of the tournament because a lot of hype around this carry jungler, definitely looking towards Swiss stages. A lot of junglers itching to get their hands on this pick. I think a lot of junglers just itching to get Lee Sin back at all. Like, basically, the, he struggled to clear so hard hard on those first round of clears because of the uh, lack of sustain. The Riot gave him a bunch of sustain. Now he's actually kind of back to where he's in a decent spot. And there's a lot of kit picks you'd like to go for with that champion, but not going to be seeing it just yet. Instead, just going to be bog standard Kassante taking into that top side for Robo. So it will be that counter pick in the jungle, just so then you can actually try and set yourself up here for now. So the Cassante, we mentioned that matchup there as well. A lot of pros do think that the Renekton is very strong in the Cassante, but the Cassante just has so much available to him in terms of his kit that it becomes a bit more 50-50 than most people think. And then we get the Ari locked in here and the Lee Sin for Levi. So finally, after all the hype around this pick, we are going to see a carry jungler for the side of Gam. Okay. I like, I like it. I think especially for Levi, like this is a pick that's massive for this guy. Made his name on us. You can even see Raz and Gilbert calling for it on the desk. Like this is definitely a pick that Levi is very comfortable on and can be active in the early stages, which I think was missing a lot from Levi in the last one. But on the opposite side, that's another pick that can cause some serious issues. Great ball delivery messes up entirely these dive compositions because yep. you don't know what way is up when the darkness comes in. And I think for Loud, great response to what we've seen so far from Gat. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get Vettius on the phone, put him on the AD for afterwards, depending on how good or bad. Well, he is a Nocturne mid more yeah, so than anything. He's a Nikali player now. Oh, is he? Yeah, Scum. Uh, <laughs> well, thankfully, we won't have a Kali at this one. But the Nocturne be locked in, as you said, very good at disorientating people. The paranoia comes down. You have to be so very aware that, yes, you might have disengaged the fight as a Kites or even an Ari, but if you're already in, still in vision and you're away from your support, you could get picked off as just as much. So both these teams kind of happy with what they've got so far, but I do think Gam's composition a little bit more cohesive than it was in game number one. I feel like they can do a lot more with this in the early game. Yeah, it has a very solid identity, which is, hey, look, we've got good set mid jungle setup with the Ari Lee Sin. We can play hyper aggressive. We've got good setup on our bot side, thanks to this Rel as well that can try we can try and play through. So, and even obviously Renekton providing that point and click CC for Lee. So lane setup across the board, which is the best moment for Lee Sin to be brought out. But the question remains of like, how do you try and play these team fights? Because once Nocturne hits six, these dive compositions require a lot of communication, a lot of coordination, and Nocturne dissuades that because he's able to just go, hey, you can't see what your, your team's doing. You don't really know what direction people are coming from. And if you're able to provide that disruption, that could be the moment where Loud are able to strike back. Yeah, I think this is going to be definitely a little bit more kind of uh, scrappy in the early stages for GAM especially. They're going to want to try and make these things happen. But like we saw in that first game, if it doesn't go well and you start to fall behind, they did look a little bit like a fish out of water. They didn't really know exactly when and where they needed to go. So have to make sure that they can bounce back solidly. It's not the end of the world if they lose this best of three, but it definitely doesn't help them with their chances of moving on to the Swiss stage. I mean, especially um, you kind of end up with the situation where you got or seven, who will go up against the guys who knock yes. them out. <laughs> yep. He got loud, who will be going up against the guys who knock them out if we end up with uh, <laughs> both of us losing. So it'll be very interesting to see how it goes. But um, yeah, I'm excited to see Gam try and find their footing in this one again. Like it feels like, again, you've got good setup. Try and play through your lanes. But if Loud are able to get towards those later team fights like Root, incredibly safe from the dive that Gam have thanks to Zaya. You're looking at the, the ball delivery system the Croc will offer with Tin Owns. Uh, and a lot of people don't realize is that like, if you start the animation of the ultimate, it will carry past the, the area of like the ball coming back to Oriana. So a lot of that combo is going to be a case of Tino trying to time that correctly as Croc sends himself in and being that big engage tool. See what they can make of it, of course, but... For the moment, of course, if you want to connect your League of Legends account with your Prime Gaming, you can grab the exclusive experimentation emote. Get yourself a nice little bit of a freebie. And, uh, you know, you can get a lot of different stuff for Prime Gaming, so always check it out. Let's so see what they kind of go for here. I wonder if any more experimentation is going to happen in the, uh, the play-ins. What's, what's the craziest thing you're thinking? Because we, well, we, yeah, we saw a Moomoo yesterday in the WQS, which yeah, wasn't technically kind of World, so... Yeah. I mean, I'm still waiting for the Senate to come out. I've just heard 
awful things about that <laughs> <laughs> she's doing at the moment. Um, myself and Drake have also been tearing up solo queue. Well, we say solo queue. We had uh, five of the stack normals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ruining some poor person's yeah. day every day. Yeah, with Senna, so uh, we'll see how that one goes. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's still a huge amount. I think Azir is still very, very popular. I think we haven't really seen any of the uh, AD carry bullies come out from like Lucian and Caitlyn and that kind of stuff. So definitely a, a lot still to try and uh, figure out and experiment with. And also we kind of have the usual one, which is like, there's always one pick that pops up in planes, and you're like, this is so broken. And then we get to the main stage, you're Never like, this is it. useless. Yeah, Trindamir. I was around that 2020, yeah. 2021 I mean, Trindamir. Mumu last yeah, year. Yeah, Mumu well. last year. It does feel kind of fun, though. I, I like the uh, the kind of testing grounds, if you will, of, uh, of uh, the planes to kind of see what we might or might not see. But uh, so far, it's been pretty pretty standard. I think that we should be seeing a lot of Renekton and a lot of Orianna as we go through the, uh, through the, through the planes and even the main stage. So. We'll see what ends up being the uh, the flavor of the tournament. It's a month-long tournament. Does uh, does end up getting what I call the mini metas, and uh, you end up kind of having things that are priority, even though they wouldn't have been priority at the start. Yeah, I still think though, like control mage is just so strong. This Oriana is a menace. We saw it yesterday. We haven't got to see a huge amount of it in the last game, just because there just wasn't a position for it to really scale into it. And even in a uh, first series of the day, going for a bit of a more defensive build for this in Tin Owns, I want to see pure aggression. I want to see like the Andres straight in towards the Shadow Flame, like get your damage there, so you can actually be a two-item carry and really get into the mid game and hitting your stride. Level three. There was a moment there for Seos to go for something, but now that Levi has been revealed, Croc on a just walk away. Just get hit by the Q, and he lands it, so he goes straight back in on top of it. The funny thing is, I don't. I was gonna say you don't actually want that one v one. Now Croc might be forced to flash as he realizes he's a little bit isolated away from his team. Nice full tilt from Pallet to get him right into the thick of it, but. Good little bit of aggression there from Levi. In the 1v1, he would lose, but in a 1v2, he definitely wins. Yeah, it, it's a back away. Croc, unfortunately, have to burn that flash just because you had that push from Gam on that bot side, able to lean in to try and help out with Croc. So, at least the moment, Gam doing some good work. Cassie as well, taking a little bit of damage, but will give the opportunity for, at least with the push here, Levi to get the double scuttle. And a lot of that is trying to set Croc behind, so he just hits six a little bit later. You delay that effect, he has a little bit longer before it becomes really relevant in these. Um, in these lanes and in these parts. Not as explosive a start as they had for Loud in the first game, as we see Kiaya going for a little bit of a cheeky trade to get that demolished proc up on that top side, but you know, little by little bit by bit, that's the power of the top laners as well. We see it so often that it's, you kind of need to always be in that lane. If you go for a bit of an unfavorable reset, you're going to lose a plate or two because of demolish and how strong it is. So right now, it just feel like uh, Kiaya does feel comfortable in this one. He really, really wants this uh, turret plate, but he needs to be very careful with how he goes for it. He's taking one too many turret shots. He has to flash. And that's the thing, uh, as Jamada would say, the curse of Los Pletos uh, almost took him. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's just bad decision making from Kiaia. Like, you know the Nocturne's going to be up on this bot top side, right? You knocked Croc out of the bot lane. You know that he tried to clear all his camps. So the only place he really could be is going to be top side. So Kiaia burning that for no real reason when he could have just tried to wait out. Um, so a little bit of a mistake that I think Croc should be able to come back and punish then and kind of put Kiai in his place once more. We shall see. Both mid laners and top laners will be hitting six very soon. And that's when the game really starts to become a force. You want to have full access to all of your abilities before you're really trying to go for something. And yeah, you know, Seos just being a little bit of a nuisance just to try and make sure he has full eyes on Levi. And that's kind of half the battle when it comes to something like a Nocturne or Lee Sin. If you have vision on them, if you know where they're going to be most of the time, they do have a much more muted impact of how they can kind of affect the game. Yeah, I think that's where, at the moment, you're trying to keep track, but at, there's been no real, like, funny business when it comes to Path, right? It's been full, clear, reset, go back to your camps on either side of the map that are respawning. So everyone kind of aware of what the enemy jungler is up to. Uh, it's just been a case of, well, damn, getting push on bot side, making it very, very difficult for Loud to respond in a lot of ways to this. So you can see again, Lee Sin going to start up Dragon because he knows, hey, bot lane's pushed in. The Croc can't just deal with me himself, and Caddy has pushed mid. So at the moment, Gam playing a much more calculated game and just playing off of their wave states well with the winning lanes and mid and bombs. Yeah, much more cool, calm, and collected here from Gam. Better start overall for sure. They are coming out on top a little bit. There's first dragon of the game going over to them. Second one's going to be a mountain one. We'll see in five minutes, but 
For now, Seos just being a little bit more cheeky with his positioning right now, recognizing he's in a position to kind of get away from Pallet should uh, Slater and him go for something a bit more aggressive. But I think it's, it's level six for this Gam bot lane when they get access to the Magnet Storm and, of course, the uh, the ultimate from the, uh, the Kai'Sa. That's when this, you know, assassination combination can come in. Yeah, and if you can keep up the pressure on Loud, that's where they really start to struggle, especially pre-20 minutes. Like, they're not great at going for cross maps in the early stages. They're not great at trying to find themselves in a position where, oh, we can trade objective A for objective B. So if you're actually in a position where, say now, seven minutes, you're looking at Rift Herald, it's not often that we see Croc trying to then go, oh, I'll dive bot instead or something along those lines. So if you can keep the pressure up, it kind of just becomes a stew that Loud can't really deal with. And I think that's where Gam, if they can start to move around towards these objectives after getting Dragon, after getting pressure on the bottom side and keeping that up, Loud will start to struggle. We'll just wait and see. It's going to be quiet, I think, for the next few minutes. We will have a Rift Herald spawning in 30 seconds, but... The pressure for Gam does feel... Oh, nice little move. Oh. going to say, go completely on it. You mentioned it earlier. They wanted to punish the flashless crocodile, and Croc does just stuff that beautiful there from Robbo. But you didn't even need a style on like that. No. It's like, oh, yeah, he's had no flash. We can go for this. But instead, it's like, hang on, let me just break this man's ankles. So Gam, now down. We just said, hey, we want to see them keep up the pressure. Well, once again, Croc gets into top lane, helps Robbo out, shuts down Kiaia and goes, right, well, now we're the ones that get this Rift Herald. Yep, and there's a reason why it was a featured match represented by Mercedes-Benz, because uh, those moments where Robbo should be on the backside of it just changed the dynamic of the game. All of a sudden, top lane's under pressure. Ooh, Croc, they might try and go on top of you here. No one actually helped him out with the Rift Herald, so that's just going to be a big change of place. That's fine, though. Ro like, Roots on bot side, he's getting two plates for this, so you've invested everything from Gam to try and get this because you don't have your top laner there. Kaya doesn't even have the TP to get down to bot side. So, True. Like, this is actually still working out relatively well for Loud because Kaya will be able to pick up the wave, but you just lost that last wave and maybe you lose another plate here. Maybe you lose your life for Kaya as well because no flash and here comes the dive. I mean, he's already used his ultimate just to try and clear it off. They'll get the second plate to come in here. The stun comes down. The knockup is good. He finally gets himself away. The root is decent. Can they get the damage? They can! Rude picks that one up, and that is now 2-0 and for Loud in this game. They get everything they wanted and a little bit more. Hey, we, I just said Loud aren't great at cross map, but they pulled it off incredibly well. Problem is, though, Proc needs to be top. Has the ult if he can get in here. Yeah, he does indeed. The kickback is good. The Magna Storm, but again, it's still a Cassante, so he's going to be able to be just fine. He has so many dashes and flashes. Now they've used two different things. There's the CC buffer coming in. Pallet's in a little bit of trouble. Flash comes in, trying to get himself away from it. Robo is saying, bring more! Bring everybody! I'll take his all on! The ult it finally comes in, and they get the execution there with the Lee Sin Q. But it took a hell of a lot longer than Gam needed. I wasn't sure if Croc would just move up towards top side with the ultimate, just try and help out in that regard, because I think if you end up a Croc there, they're not able to do much. Didn't want to lose out on the mid plates, though, to Katty. So at the moment, you get a good amount of the, the wave as well, because Root and Seos are up here. So yes, it's kill for a kill, but Loud's still responding well. Yeah, Slater. Does have flash, might have to use it here in a second. They are going to get jump on top of him. The charm is good, the heal keeps him with a little bit of movement speed out of harm's way, but those are the small mistakes we saw in game number one as well, where they just weren't really respecting Loud, and Loud fully prepared to punish it. Yeah, the fact that you don't even get the Rift Herald down on this top side is such a big win for Loud. Uh, Kati going to respond to Root here. Doesn't have his ults available, so, but you can see Maybe Gam trying to think of setting up something with Levi and Pallet on this top end of the map, but they know that there's probably a few more members of Loud up there than they'd bargain for, so they're going to back away. But again, Tenon's now pushing in mid because Katy's seen on top side, so he's going to take plates. It's little wins that are starting to uh, pick up here for Loud. It's only, you know, an 800 gold lead, seven, 600 gold lead for them, but control over top side, you'll get to reset now. You got control over mid, where you can start to move over towards this dragon. Just start to disrupt Gam, who had control of the early stages. Yeah, I will say, unfortunately, there for Loud, they did lose a plate in the mid lane, but it does feel like it's Gam responding a lot of the times. Loud making the play, and they're, you know, two, two movements forward, but Charm lands from Kati, but Tinone's had his jungler in the wings, and they know with the paranoia available that it's not a fight you want to be taking just yet, but. Again, Loud just kind of playing this sl not like slow, but in a, a much more methodical way. They're not reacting in a, in a panicked way. They're just getting what they can and, and constantly making Gam answer to them. Yeah, I think at the moment Loud would like to try and set up for this Rift Herald and again have Gam respond to them. 
But the biggest problem that they have right now is like Tinone's actually kind of a little bit behind. Would love to try and finish off his Luton's Echo before he gets in towards this next fight. Like that would give him so much control. So they have him on top side, but he needs to push in, reset, then TP into the fight. So a little bit dangerous. Control over mid priority though means that Loud will start up the dragon. You can see Robo trying to fight for bot priority as well, but this is kind of dangerous. There's a lot of a uh, uh, big, big combo the Gam can just go for here as Lauda try to set up first. Yeah, be careful there as Katy and Tinons. They can't be caught going for the TP because they will just be CC'd immediately by the opposition number. So they have to make sure they're in a position to kind of get that one safely. And as we see, Bo 80 carries with their first item, Storm Razor for Slater. So going not the build we just saw there from Root because he knows he's going to have to try and burn through a couple more health bars. Still, though, like this is decent patient from Lauda. They're like, hey, look, they have Rift Herald. They can immediately try and take some of the plates. So we got to back off. But again, Tinones is they going to reset. He's going to pick up his Ludens off the back of this. Probably those Merc Threads finished as well. And then they'll be able to actually fight with this massive Orianna off the back of this as well. So I think that's what a lot of they're playing for. You can see Ludens just completed. I think he's just waiting. No, won't get the boots at the moment. But still in a really strong spot now compared to Cassie. Yeah, see what Caddy's able to do now. It does have a TP available to themselves. So might just push in that top side and look to get a little bit more. Not quite sure. They could stay for the third fight if they really wanted to, but they need that reset in right now. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. They need Cassie to try and get his own answer to the uh, mythic that's completed, but you can see Tinones are like, cool. We're going to complete it for gold is and just try and find that dragon off the reset for Cassie. Cassie immediately TP into the tower though, so they're kind of missing their window of opportunity here. Here we go. Proc looking to get caught on with a flash away. So Pallet loses his ultimate, gets caught out. They're going to get him right up on top of the wall. He's nowhere to go and he's taken out, but they've taken down the jungler as well. The all out comes in to bring the Renekton right back into the hands of the Zaya as she tries to put down the feathers to get this damage down. A flash away from Kiaya gets him out of that fight. But you've lost your jungler now on the side of Loud. They need to try and push this mid lane. But I don't think Gamma are going to let them do it for free. Levi still has kick, he still has flash. You've got to be so careful about how you position here. Levi could make a play. Tinones. Tinones does flash away, gets away from the charm. You can see Kati trying to see if he can catch him there, get good reactions there from the loud mid laner. But again, we're getting disappointed. The, the people who died have respawned. We might have another fight. Yeah, and I mean, look at bot side. Kaya just goes, hey, yeah, you do your thing mid. I'm going to get some plates on bot side. So nice response from Gam. They're immediately going to turn over towards the dragon. This is where it gets risky, though. They're a little bit low, but I think they can burn this. Be Actually, maybe not. TP from Tinones as well. Rout really wants to get in here. He got in. He gets himself the vision right there as well. They're going to try and jump straight on top of the least in. The flash kick is good, but it's not good enough. Tries to see if he can move away. Excuse me, he uses flashes there. Only got him right behind the, on the ward hop. And now the dragon is taking so much damage. There's a bit of a charm under Robo, but he's taking so much damage. He's going to get taken out. That is the question. Sater wants to go for something right now, but it's going to be so difficult. It's a little bit of a strange situation. There's going to be the strike breaker. As you can see, Croc goes a little bit too far forward. These 80 carries are the ones that are trying to be set up for success. As these odd bars are so, 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 so low. Levi lands the Sonic Wave, but doesn't want to overcommit to it. But important for Loud. Yes, they lose their jungler, but they did gain the dragon. They get the dragon, but it's more kills going over towards Gam again so this is where we get to see finally that a thousand gold lead for Gam and a huge amount of that as you can see from the Mascar lane economy Snapchat is on that jungle right so Levi doing a great job here and although they did manage to push Gam back they didn't need to take the fight I think they were looking at Tin Owens going hey you're gonna have your ult up in a second maybe we can make the play but without it they just over commit this is a much, much stronger start now from Gam as well, keeping themselves right in this one. Yes, they did lose that dragon fight, but they had one of their own. But again, let's look at how chaotic this whole thing is. Yeah, and this is where Croc should have just tried to take the long way around. Because the problem is, look at where Zaya is. She's completely zoned out of the equation. Can't really get into this fight because she's trying to figure out what side of the wall she's supposed to be on. Robo then ends up like, they get the pick. Your jungler goes down. And now Root's again trying to walk in. So the whole time Gamma are having this uh, fight, they're getting their damage off, whereas Root's trying to get into a position to actually follow up. And here again, Root, yes, gets caught out, but the Nocturnal ult actually means that this kick isn't seen by anyone, despite how good it was. And Cassie could have actually gone for the flash, or gone for a charm, tried to see if he got, could have got the kill, but wasn't really in the position. But at this stage, Robo's out, you get the dragon. Just call it a day. Yeah. There's no need. No ultimate on towards the Orianna. And I think that's where they were like, oh, maybe we can try and get something with this setup. But your Ori doesn't really have the damage without that ultimate at the moment. And you don't really have Root in a position where you can step up to be the carry pallet, though. Oh, pallet. Gonna have to try and use a crash down right now. It is a chem soul, so we'll have a little bit of uh, the rift to help him out, getting that extra little bit of a knockback from the plant. But while we came back, the top lane and the mid lane, thank you so much to our observers, do end up getting taken out. So it's a trade. 
Still about a thousand gold. Actually, it's coming up to about two thousand gold. Gamma been able to pick up a lot of farm on those side lanes. Thirty CS between the junglers is the one that I'm looking at right now, and it does feel like it's uh, it's Gam having a little bit of a stronger time on these resets. Yeah, definitely getting a, a lot off the back of this. You can see there on the, uh, the go difference over time paired by AWS, like you're getting a huge amount of uh, opportunities on GAM to start to pick up the pace. And I think they continue. They need to continue this because you can see there, like the difference when GAM has vision versus doesn't have vision in team fights is absolutely insane. So they're able to control the map, look for picks with the Ari and Levi, who's quite fed. Even having Slater, if he needs to ulting in to find those picks, is going to be great. Rift Howling, Levi's back pocket as well. Would like to try and get that down, but uh, I imagine they're going to try and hold on to that for the mid lane tower instead and just have Cathy slowly work down this bot lane turret. I think it's just so close to being taken down anyway. You commit a little bit of extra time. You should be able to just kind of get it eventually. Pretty much full first items being coming out across the board for pretty much everybody. As we wait to see now what the next big play will be. It's just under two minutes until that dragon spawns, but being a chem soul, it's not going to be the biggest of priorities. And we'll see if these teams get a little bit more creative. I will say, though, this is a significantly better showing from Gam. We kind of got to see them pushed over in the last game because Slater and Palak couldn't keep control of our bot side. Look at the difference now, right? Levi, far more confident on the Lee Sin. They're willing to contest for a lot of these objectives. Kaya getting some good positioning when it comes towards these fights as well, though. Struggled a little bit, thanks to Robo in that last one, but at least Gam are actually fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe with Loud rather than just being blown over by a stiff breeze. Gam as well, looking for Zaya here. Root might have overextended. Yeah, definitely has overextended. The cleanse ain't gonna do anything. Gonna have to probably flash as well, but honestly, once he got caught out there, I think the cleanse and the flash are useless, and unfortunately for Loud, their carry is gone. Now they can use the Rift Herald up on this top side, really, or sorry, mid lane, really kind of put down the pressure. Yeah, there was no need for Root to be in that position. Didn't have any sort of vision. It gets caught out now. That's gonna be the mid lane turret taken without much resistance, and they can even continue this push forward. And um, gotta be very careful here. Charm could land. And the guy be behind. I was gonna say, they're gonna try and maybe go for a bit of a move here. Kiaya has to flash away. Does end up kind of being a little bit too far extended right now, and it's just becoming a little bit of a problem now. Gam kind of building this momentum to get themselves back in this match. 3,000 gold. Yeah, I mean, big move from Gam to get that, it, that everything that they needed there. I will say, overextending just a smidge, where in that situation, you could have just backed off, set yourselves up for Dragon, and you would have been in a great spot. But this is just silly from Root. Like, yes, you've got that ultimate, but you have zero vision in that yeah. push to spot out, spot out Pallet. Great flash in, sets up perfectly coming through with the ultimate as well. And as they start to back away, I think that's where they could have been, but we're back into live. You got 13 seconds until Dragon. This is where you want to try and keep this pressure up as Gam. Yeah, you really, really want to try and keep your foot down on the pedal. Get that momentum going for yourself and get yourself back into this series because after game one, I don't think a lot of people would have been, you know, kind of, I wouldn't give them too much of a hard time if they said, look, this is allowed 2-0, but really, really good bounce back here by Gam and to kind of completely change up their draft and priorities to make sure they aren't just going to get, you know, bombed out again. Yeah, we'll see Raz might be picking up his shoe by the end of this, but you now, now starting to move in. Sorry, <laughs> flip-flop, yes, but now Lev is starting to move in. Levi in a good position. Keep your eyes on Pallet. Actually going to come back over the wall. I thought he was going to try and keep that position. Yeah, you got TP wards available as Kiaia kind of comes in from the mid lane. You're going to see now if Robo can keep him going, but never mind. They're going to try and fully commit here onto the Rekt and get his ultimate out of him. The paranoia does mean that there's no real re-engage to come out of this one here. Kiaia taking a lot of damage here and will eventually be taken out. They did get the dragon on the side of Gamba. Can they get out with their lives? That is the question. Robo feeling empowered and confident gets kicked right the way back because he wants nothing to do with this team. And Levi war tops over, so Dragon goes over to Gam, kill to Loud. Yeah, Loud though, they're trying to see if they can maybe move into position here to just keep them pushed out. Actually going to continue to chase this. I wasn't sure if they were just trying to look for the mid-tier 2 instead, but they did find a pick. Katsi, he's getting a lot of damage onto him. He does have the spirit, doesn't have the spirit rush, I should say. And that means he's going to be going down. So that's two kills. That changes the trade pattern a little bit. It's gone from 3,000 gold to 1,500 gold. They've cut it in half. Yeah, nice job coming through from Loud to find that pick. Even now, they get to kind of right the wrongs of the lanes a little bit, push in top, get control over this mid lane as well. Send Root into a position where he can actually start to get a bit more of this gold and try and get him towards two and a half to three items very quickly. So nice picks. I put. I still think Loud at least having control over the the dragons for a moment will help out substantially. And just again trying to see if they can find these picks versus big team fights.
Not only does it lead to picks, it leads to an objective, and that's what we always look for in these games, is that if you turn a kill into an objective, you're doing well. Gwinsu's Rage Blade just get finished up here by Slater, so... Can I just very quickly point out, Go on. how many wards are around that Dragon Pit? That is a <laughs> ludicrous <laughs> amount of And they're all wards. for loud. <laughs> that's the craziest thing. It's, it's it, They're all loud wards. If anyone sneezes around that Dragon Pit, they will know about it. But, I mean, it's why they felt comfortable going for that tower. There you go. There's a, mean, a method to the madness, Dagger. <laughs> I mean, look, allowed getting something back is nice. Trying to slow down the pace as well for Gam, because let's be real, I mean, Zaya scales wonderfully, Oriana scales fantastically, same with Cassante. So the later this game goes, the more opportunities Loud will have. So it is on Gam to try and keep the pace up and keep themselves in a position where they can threaten Loud. And it's these picks, these moments where you're trying to clear a vision that maybe you can find that t opportunity. We'll see now, Loud. Kind of getting themselves a couple of second items, or excuse me, uh, Gam getting themselves a couple of second items. Got the Sterics Gauge and the Black Cleaver for Kiaya and Levi, respectfully. And of course, we did talk about the Gwenzu's Rage Blade as well, being picked up for Slater alongside that uh, Storm Razor's Edge. So, we'll have to see if they want to go for something right now. It does look like, at the moment, they're happy to kind of just control this mid lane. They don't want to go for too much, and that's what I was saying. You got to be careful of those feathers. The Zaya is so scarily, uh, you know, kind of you know, deceptive with the way she works. I think they're trying to keep an eye out for Rob. Oh, Pallet oh, missed it! Pallet missed it! Levi has to kick away. They do get the stretching strike. That's going to force the cleanse. The charge comes down. They got Kiaia on the backside. The flanking Renekton is the scariest. They love to try and get onto Root, and he is dead. Now that's two kills. Good shockwave, but I don't think it's going to be enough. A double kill for the top laner as they keep pushing in and more. They are looking to try and make do and make up for a first game went. And Gam looking to bounce back hard. Root thought that this was game one, thought that he could go forward, but wasn't expecting Kiaia over the side. All that vision we talked about in the bottom side for Loud passes out, and the second it does, Kiaia gets into position. Gam, find the kills, and they'll get the Baron. 5v5, five, five five, and they came out with four for none. They'll get the Baron, they'll get all the jungle camps, they got the mid tier one, two as well. This was a fantastic amount of gold and just presence for Gam. Yeah, we'll see it as the, the replay kicks off, just how quickly Loud panic when they see the Renekton come in. Like, Rooted already uses ultimate to try and make the play happen. It was a good ult because he does get rid of the kick here, which was the big follow-up, right? Has to dodge Levi going for this kick, then sets up for Palace. But it's, the problem is he's now too far forward as the proc comes over the wall, tries to flash away, and Loud are panicking to try and keep Root safe. But with the follow-up from Levi, with uh, Kiai just being in the mix, it was so difficult to try and keep him alive. And Ori just isn't in a position right now to be that one DPS carry for those fights. She's only sitting on an item and a half. Yeah, and it, I mean, yeah, the Red Bull Baron power play now coming in here for Gam, but this is a huge shift now. It's a 5,000 gold lead, five and a half actually. Dragon spawning in a minute's time. They're going to get full priority in all the side lanes, and you are just kind of sitting and waiting now on the side of uh, of Loud to try and get this game back into your into your favor. Yeah, honestly, I think if I'm Loud, I'm like, look. Let's not even go for it. Just leave this next dragon. Yes, it will put them on towards soul point, but realistically, we're just not in a position to try and fight right now. We have absolutely no vision. Let's see if we can try and get some of the standing go to the map, use some of these bounties, like get top tower, try and get control over mid a little bit. Just give ourselves an opportunity to scale. Like, three items and Loud are so absolutely terrifying in a team fight that if you take a step wrong, you're going to know all about it as Gam. So just take it slow. There's no need to try and overforce things here. No need to overforce, no need to get too antsy. But like I said, in that last fight, the panic that kind of set in. But oh, here we go. They're looking for a little bit of a move here onto the Kaisa, and they will find her. Can they get anyone more? That's the question. The TP's come in, but a two kill for none. You said for Gam to not be antsy, but Loud didn't allow them to be. Robo, how have you done this twice? Absolutely styling on them. Getting Slater off the back of that was so crucial. What a play from the top laner. I mean, it is the feature matchup. He is, the, in a lot of people's eyes, the soul of this team. And when they needed him most, he stepped up to carry. And that is a massive swing now. There it is, the featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz. It is going to be Kiaia versus Robo. And Robo is kind of having his way with this matchup. I'm just gobsmacked. <laughs> like, that was so sick. Like, out of nowhere, I was like, oh, yeah, they're going to see each up. I started looking at the minimap. And next thing, Robo, flash forward, stunned with the W, then into the knockback, immediate ult. 
And if you can see the attempt of the Everfrost to keep him safe, but with the immediate ult from Nocturne, the follow from Seos, there was nothing Gam could do in this. That's what I love about that play. It's the instant follow-up from the rest of his team, the pure trust in their top laner to go, this is the play, we all commit to it, everyone all in, and that was just fantastic moves there. I mean, just great to get them right back into this one now. So yes, they're still 4,500 gold down, but they got the Dragon, so that's not coming up anytime soon. They've delayed pretty much all of this Baron. It's going to be gone in 15 seconds. You got very little. Yeah, I mean, a legend in the CB Law. Six titles matching BRTT for Robo, and now coming into this as well, a legend on the Rift as... Looking at Pallet again. Doesn't have the flash this time, Robo, but definitely you can see respect from Gam as they start to move back to realize, hang on, lads, we don't have the opportunity to really push in here. And this is buying that time, that well, massive amount of time for Loud to get that scaling. But this is what Loud do. Like, when you look at them in CB Law, it's like 20 minutes is where they start to come alive. They have these moments where they can find a pick. They'll play off good wave states. They'll find some way to slow down the game and get back into it. And Robo, with that play, did exactly that. That's it. We talked about how, you know, in the last game, the early game was not what Loud are known for in the CB Law. It's the later stages, the 20 plus minutes. That even when they're behind, they were able to kind of create opportunities, create moments where they can make anything happen just like that. And this thing as well is that at that time, the like, Kiaya was so far ahead. He had the Abyssal Mask along, like he was three items coming up to three and a half and four now in a moment. But it becomes so much harder to deal with this Cassante the more tankiness he gets, the more, you know, kind of items and, and kind of just a general kind of game changing buffs he gets from some of these items like the gargoyles don't play yeah i mean it, at this stage your your biggest worry is going to be like tin owns when he starts to finish his void stuff it's just going to be so so clutch for loud again though you got to kind of like buy that time so at the moment you can see loud they've kind of set up their vision line right it's like a direct line just across their war place Palettes. he didn't know he was sitting on a ward and pink ward did not catch it there robo just moving forward aggressively, confidently, knowing it's going to but let's not, let's not get it twisted for the moment. Yes, it's great for Loud, they're looking like they're doing a fantastic job, but got to remember, this is still a 4,500 gold lead for Gam. They are still in the driving seat. They need to make something happen, though. Yeah, they're just running out of time. It's the scaling that's going to come online for Loud very, very quickly, and just playing off this line of wards is where Loud feel comfortable, and they're happy to defend this for the moment. Yeah, no Barons. The Siege is not really going to go anywhere. The Everfrost into the... Q from the RE is not going to do a huge amount to Robo, who has basically no magic resistance at the moment. Has a little bit of passive stuff from the uh, Iceborne Gauntlet, but that's about it. So, got to be careful of the damage that's kind of being chucked into him. But for now, it is definitely a uh, much tighter game here for Gam than they probably would have liked, considering how well they were working in that mid game. Yeah, and this is where, like, in theory, what you want to try and do is Gam is like, hey, we're going to try and set up for a push in mid, use that to then draw loud into the mid lane and then establish all our vision try and see if we can get all that set up uh, and clear out some of the opportunities loud have had to defend their own jungle but we're just not quite seeing that and um, they're trying to kind of cut corners not pull enough members of loud into those positions and it means that the loud are constantly able to defend that vision line so for gam it's a case of hey can you actually tr play through this map state properly and I mean, to be honest, it's not something that we see from them a lot domestically. It is a case of, hey, if we show up mid, you're going to fight. And that's kind of the way that it has worked in the BCS. With Leo showing this much constraint, I think Gamma are starting to struggle a little. Yeah, just a little bit. They're not getting the same kind of uh, madness, if you will, that they would get from the VCS. They're not getting the same kind of crazy plays that everyone just kind of throws, throws everything at the wall and sees what stick. But important to note that we have got a couple of key items being picked up here. We have got three items here onto the Xyle Lord Dominus Regard gets finished up. So they are fantastically fed if they can put down the feathers. Not only that, on the other side, you do have Slater with three items, but they also have the tiny little buff of having a stopwatch. So we'll wait and see how both these teams want to fight around Baron these fights. Fight. Baron fight. Baron what fight. What can you do, Levi? Yeah, what can you do Robo now with his Randwin Zomen going full for that uh, AD or armor I should say to deal with the AD it's kind of making him towards it watch Tinon he's trying to sit off on the side here see if he can catch Gam as they start to make their way in again like Tinon's can kind of sit and look for these plays because he knows Croc and Sales can have that immediate follow-up but not quite finding anyone for the moment vision not great for Loud in this area which means oh, Tinon he does get kicked back but there's no charm they're gonna finally jump straight in on top of him but now they can get everybody else down you can see Rue trying to deal with the Lee Sin the Paranoia puts everybody into the darkness and they can't find the carries. Two kills, three kills, maybe even four. Slayer goes down and that's it. The Baron and Loud are right back in the game. The pick was so close to being there, but the damage was not there to follow up. 
and once again, Loud are managing to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. It just feels like, Gam, they, it, it's such a massive moment. They felt like they had it, but just small little things that went against them that just didn't really work. Levi looking for a 1v1. Never mind, it's a 1v2. Just get a little war jump over the wall, but he's going to be nowhere near this dragon to even potentially stop that soul point going over. But I mean, Loud just playing this matchup so, so well. And just honestly, just keeping Gam just in the dark, quite literally. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately for Gam, they just weren't able to try and play off of, hey, look, we've got this Lee Sin Ari, let's try and make a quick pick. And you can see the, uh, the idea was there, especially with Slater having that ultimate. Come in over the side, try and burst them out. But despite not having defensive stats, it's so difficult to burst out this Ori. Charm oh. dodged, which was beautiful. But then the miss Q coming through from Caddy, that's the damage that realistically would have finished off this Oriana nice and early, but not there. Then as you get the follow-up from the Rectin on this top side, great charm coming through from Sales to keep everyone off of Root. And with those three items that you talked about, Ocean completed, Root is able to carry it the DPS he needs. That's it, the paranoia comes down. They don't know exactly where everybody is. And then just perfect target selection from Robbo as well. Immediately goes all out onto Slater, who had flash and heal, had, could not use either of them because he just knew he was dead. There was nothing to go, there was nothing to run away from. And now you've still got all the standing gold on the map for allowed as well. So not only do they get the fight, they're gonna start getting top towers, you get top tier one, you get tier two, they've got tier two on bot. Look at mid, Croc is gonna crack open this tier two as well. Like, you're in such a good position now as Loud to now not only get the gold lead back in your favor, but TP. also throw it. Here we go, they're looking for a little bit of a fight right now. The turret from the Nocturne in the mid lane, because he's got the Paranoia to join in on top of this one. Kati has been spotted, and immediately the Paranoia comes out. Turn off the lights, where are you gonna go? I'm gonna jump right on top of your face and force you to back away. Just small little things that just stop everything from Gam, and Loud have just perfectly navigated this mid to late game. Gazi and Levi try to turn on to Croc, but he's able to get out of there as well. Now Loud, they still got two burned up minions here, but Croc has been separated. Can Gam now no, try to remount something? You know what? If it's, if it's so nice, you try it twice. Let's go for it. They're going to try and see if they get Kai on the backside. He pops the dominance to see if they can burn him down. There's the good kick. The shockwave comes in. Slater tries to do the damage, but the feathers do go flying. No Root to come out. Slater does get the stopwatch off finally. They're jumping onto Root, but he, Root has a stopwatch of his own. Kati goes down to Robo on the backside. This one immediately turns his target onto the other carry of Gam. And should we have to slice him down? He was the featured matchup. He was the man we love to be the king. And he is doing just that. A triple kill for Robo as a CB LOL roar into the World Championship. He's not quite done. He wants to best a little bit more time, but he's not got the damage now. He's finally done on his all out, but they may still look for more. Robo was the chosen one. He was the one we said to watch the day. And in game two, when Loud were down, we said they were out. Robo stood tall and said, come at me, Kaya, what you got? They said, you've got the high ground, but it does not matter because Robo still taking a lot of damage, finally gets the Gargoyle Stone plate. He's gonna get another Dominus. That is the second Dominus in this fight. And finally, the shutdown comes on the Robo, but he is not the carry for the minute. Kaya does get a double kill and Gam survive, but it is literally that word, survive. Two Dominus, two Shockwaves, a second chance needed for and Loud to try and finish this off. Tree. <laughs> it's only Halloween, don't start that. But as he starts to come in, I mean, for here, Ruth, he's got on the wrong side of this fight. But again, Sales keeping people at bay, managed to get onto Levi and Kaya to keep him out. Then you do get Slater, who's very, very far forward, but Ruth posts a stopwatch. He's dealing a lot of time, and Robo is soloing out on uh, Slater on the back line, which makes things significantly easier, because now consistent damage is gone with consistent damage. And Robo, this Cassante, level 17 with this many items, it's going to be so damn strong. But defender advantage as we come into the, re or the second fight here. Kaya, super healthy, coming back out. Robo has nothing left in tank when it comes to damage, so it's all on tin owns, but he just doesn't have enough consistent DPS as this Oriana to try and take it out Kaya. And I guess, again, like you said, this is good for Gamma to get themselves back into this, but it's a big old but. The scaling feels like it has hit. This feels like now you have a full item, Cassante. Oh, I'm gonna say that, stop it. Look at no damage. No one did anything. They threw everything at him and he couldn't do any damage onto it. With one minute until the chem soul drops off. I mean, a chem soul for the Cassante this huge is actually massive. Yeah, it's gonna be so difficult to try and take him down. But the problem is, I don't even know if we're gonna get to that. I mean, 50 seconds, yes, until it's up, but uh, you have so many issues for Gam to deal with. They've got top lane that's pushing in, mid control there for Loud. Like, yes, Loud will probably take the Dragon, but I just don't think you're in a position here as Gam to, to take the fight beforehand. 
They gotta throw something at it. You gotta throw something at it. The super minions are being dealt with by Kiaya, but look at that drop. Oh my god. And the win probability powered by AWS. And that's the thing, it's probability. So it's just kind of figuring out where the game is. And Gam, we're pretty solid for most of it, but it does feel like right now, it's just so difficult for, for them to even step up to Loud. I mean, we said already, right? The scaling has perfectly come through for Loud. You're looking at Nerly, your final item coming through from Root. Tinones is going to start working out. Imagine on Rabadon's death cap, so even then, it's still going to be uh, tough, but I just don't think he's going to get to it. I mean, well, maybe actually as he has uh, headed back, but like, it's just so hard. Like, even look at Robo there. It's elixir of Iron. There. Yeah, he's got an Elixir of Iron, so he's doing even more there. There's going to be the camp. So goes in, stolen! Nicely done by Levi, the king of objective steals. He will give his life. But it is enough. And look at Kati. I don't know where he is, but he, he's there. I mean, they were setting up for a potential fight, but you're now 45 seconds as loud with Baron on the way. Yes, you stopped the soul, but you're going to lose Baron, and you're still only going to be shoved into your own base. Like, it delayed us, but maybe by a handful of seconds, Loud just get to do what they want to get. Yeah, they won't get the soul in the Baron. They'll just get the yeah. Baron. So this is the, uh, the issue there. And look, Levi. Always love a little bit of extra spice, kind of putting in as much as he possibly can. And like you said, any advantage you can deny from your enemy is an advantage to you. But yeah, the the Baron being here right now, and whoo, 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 Slater needs to be very careful with those recalls next time. <laughs> yeah, but loud. Now they're outside the base. 10 seconds still on Levi, which means mid lane terror is going to fall. Gam, they're crumbling in front of them. Like, yes, you took away an advantage, but you also gave yourself a disadvantage in this four versus five now as loud. Continue to push forward. One more inhibitor stands in their way between taking everything in the base of Gap. Taking everything in the base, taking this series and taking a shot at PSG. Knock them out at MSI and they want revenge, like he said. They've been thinking about this for a long time over in the CB Law, but for Gam, they have to try and find something. There has to be something from them there. Red Bull Baron power play coming in for loud, but it's gonna, be, it's gonna be so tough. You can even see now just how difficult it is for Kiaya to deal with these Supermans. Like, Renekton just doesn't really function that well in the late game. Yeah, I mean, trying even just to be a setup, essentially at this stage for Akati and for Strider, like the Abyssal Mask picked up, he's like, hey, I just wanna get into someone and help us blow them up. But again, it, it feels like Gam have to try and play for this pick. It's about trying to see if they can find that opportunity to get someone who's out of position, but at every step of the way, Loud have been like, right, now we have control group. Get uh, vision as a group. Don't let that opportunity to really happen. And it feels like it has to be on Levi to maybe look for this like miracle kick to set things up. But you can see that with waves all over the place in favor of Loud, you're kind of split up yourself as Gam to try and cover. Not only if you, yes, you get the miracle kick, that would be amazing, but Root has a, a GA. You know, this isn't exactly an easy target. Even if you do burst them out, you're gonna have to do it again after the fact. And with Baron still up for another minute, they are putting in some serious work. The Paranoia comes out to stop any kind of re-engage as they do get eventually jump here straight onto the Renekton. Kiaya in no man's land. He flashes, but he's feared anyway. He was left in the dark, and now he will be shut down by himself alone and isolated. And now without the Renekton to put any kind of real pressure down, Robo doesn't have a problem with this. He'll tank this all day long. He doesn't care what they throw at him. In fact, he might just turn around and say, take the tower, I'll tank it. Yeah, they're just going to be able to continue to push in. This is going to be the third inhibitor turret dropped. Loud going to start to rotate up towards this top side, it looks like, to take the last inhibitor, escort these minion waves in in the mid lane as well. Tinones is resetting. He wants the TP. Loud want to end it here. Yeah, Loud want to end it, but you can see there, Gam, no, if they let anyone go back, they're in so much trouble. There you go, the reset's coming in. Death cap, I imagine, to be finished. There it is, coming out from Tinones. The damage is insane now from this Orianna. The scaling has been hit. Robo goes back and TP's right back in just to pick up an Elixir of Iron. He doesn't even care about the fight. He wants the towers. They want the 2-0. They try to go for the kick, but Levi can't get there in time. He's feared, he's rooted, and he is killed. Two kills going over to Loud. Not only will they get two kills, They'll get the 2-0, and Loud will be continuing on in the upper bracket. It will be Gam to go down to the losers. And what a performance from Loud to do so. Game one, pentakill from Root, du double solo kill from Root in that bot lane. We get to see what the AD carry of the squad can do. And in game two, when the chips were down and their backs were against the wall, again Loud find their pick find their opportunity and it's off the man on your screen right there robo fantastic
fantastic performance on the Cassante. Insane. And it literally was. It was that one play in bot side underneath yep. the tier two tower that just completely shifted how Gam felt about that game. They were confident, they were con they were concise, and then all of a sudden they, they were questioning things. They were second guessing themselves. And like you mentioned, they had an opportunity to win, but the timing was very much against them, and they just waited too long. Yeah, I mean, they needed to try and play off of, hey, push a wave, look for pick in jungle, set up vision, try and find these opportunities in and around objectives, but they just never really gave themselves that chance. Tried to cut corners, and they got cut down by loud response. Yeah, absolutely, and yeah, there it is. Big, big L's, but the best kind of L's <laughs> for Loud coming into this one here. But yeah, it really does feel great for them. And it does feel like this has been kind of a, a long time coming from the CB LOL. They've always been that region that we've always touted as a, maybe they could do this, maybe they could do that, but it would always be kind of a, a, a you know, a, a shot in the dark or such, or an upset. Not this time. It feels different this time. Well, it has to be different. They're going up against PSG Talent now. They got knocked out by at MSI, by the squad, and now they get their chance of revenge. I mean, we said at the start of the day, right? Croc, uh, Junja's son is his yeah. name in Portuguese in solo queue. <laughs> like, this is a guy that 100% wants to show up, and this is a team that wants to show up against PSG Talon, but... And honestly, I'm shakier looking PSG talent by comparison. So know, I'm curious right? to see how this one's going to go. It's going to be an interesting one. But anyway, we're going to send it over to Trevor Quickshot and Goldberg. Or sorry, Trevor Quickshot? It's three different people. Anyway, world's cool down. <laughs> Multiple it's personalities are Multiple over. personalities. <laughs> go to world's cool You guys down. had a fantastic day of course. Thank you, Dagda and Machine. Four games back to back to back. It has been a long day here in Dublin. And at the end of it, it's coming up, Els, for Loud taking down Gam. Congratulations, Goldberg. You predicted the correct team. Unfortunately, you were not. Wait, the what correct. are you trying to do now? You were not on, the say correct it. analyst. Go on, say <laughs> it. Go on. I flip flopped. All right. I used one of my flip flopping. Let's, powers, let's you know? talk a little bit about that game. Um, uh, talk about the series as well. I think as a whole, uh, Loud came out looking stronger, looking better, somewhat as you expected, Google, but I think in much more dramatic fashion even. Yeah, but this is what we saw from Loud at the CB LoL normally. They would have a bad early game, too, right? yeah. and then they would have to try and fight themselves back. So when I was watching this game too, I was never really worried looking at it. Like, sure, Gamday looked actually really good in the early game, and they got a lot of things going for them too. But when it had to be the late game, that had been one of the... <sighs> hard times for Gam as well to really equalize on. And when you play against a team like Loud, they will absolutely punish on that. So will we call it a clean 2-0 series? Absolutely not. Game one was the only clean game. The rest of it though, great Loud team fighting. Yeah, those two moments for Gam that I saw, the Lee Sin kick that ended up turning really poorly for them. The mid lane fight that I think Robo actually just completely smurfed in was another one. Um, those that, that was tough because that goal lead that Gam had was substantial. Um, that river fight that got them that lead gave me a lot of hope, but it started to slip away to the point that you made. The fact that Loud is such a strong team fighting team that they were down by 4 or 5k and they were able to bring it back was great to see. The thing I find interesting about this particular series is coming into it, I think most you, most people would have expected Loud to be somewhat favored Yeah. in terms of both their recent performances as well as their recent Asian games and the impact on Gamma's roster. I think, however, the way the game played out, in, spe in specific as well with Rout, his performance, first pentakill of Vols 2023, it just looked great in game one. Pleasantly surprising, and the traditional loud in game two stepped up as well, which is great, so they ultimately will advance. Um, very quickly, as an aside, how many pentakills did you put in your pickums? Two or three. Two, probably. It's I'm, not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not happy plus. about You're seeing this already. You right. yeah. I think I'm good. I had three plus. I was like, this, this should be a lot. I'd love to know how many you put on your, your uh, pickums at home. Um, okay, we're going to carry on just uh, discussing the games a little bit while we're still setting up for an interview. And I think I want to turn the attention now to Gam. Um, let's talk a little bit about, first of all, their draft, their approach to gameplay. Mm -hmm. Now they are going to drop down to the loser's bracket, but I mean, Raz versus your expectations and your hopes for the team. Where do you now land after seeing two games? Game two was a little bit closer to my expectation with the Lee Sin play. Levi was a little bit more on the map, being able to make plays, the stronger team fights around River. That was closer to what I expected. I'm still really disappointed in how they are able, how they can't close games. That's something that they need to be able to sort out. Especially, I think this is good. This is a good piece of art to review going into the lower bracket because they need to recognize, okay, we have this advantage. We need to be on the same page and how we end up fights because we looked at the uh, Lee Sin kick pretty extensively, actually. The one that lost them that fight around Topside River, that's something where they're just not on the same, play, same uh, page or even see an angle on a lethal. They don't have lethal at all if they don't have charm to follow up on uh, Lee Sin kick. They use it at the same time. I just don't see, see a kill happening there. So... They're pretty on edge when it comes to late game, um, and you hate to see it. 
Yeah, but I also just think that, you know, this is one of the un unfortunate issues where they didn't have enough scrim time because this was the same issues they had. And I think back to their series against Team Secret in the upper bracket of the VCS where so many times they lost games there as well where it comes down to the late game. The early game is great, but when it comes to lane assignments, how do we actually play this out? Which two do we pressure? Are we only yeah. pushing down one lane? Are we actually timing waves on two lanes so we can at least spread out the opponent? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of the same issues we saw in that game right there that we saw against, well, other VCS opponents. So that's also why that I hope that those VOD reviews will be super intense yeah. because you don't have a lot of time. You need to fix these yeah. issues going into it. You're going to be going up against R7 next time, which is the team that, let's be real, embarrassed you at MSI and kind of put you in a different bracket now yeah. as a region. So there's a lot of redemption on the line now for the VCS going against R7. Rematch is very exciting. Grudge um, match if one, you want to. One thing I hear, we're about a minute, minute and a half away from the interview. Um, one of the things I loved hearing was the fan reaction. And we had this little, little discussion True. off air that the CB Lol as a region imports quite a, f a fair number of LCK and, and South Korean players. So... When I was looking at the crowd shots and seeing, obviously, how many Brazilians are out there, uh, their connection is probably going to be a little bit deeper there for a region like CBLOL versus many others, right, Raz? True. I mean, I didn't even expect that. I didn't think about it until you started seeing the you shots. You see the faces, yeah. yeah. You started seeing the faces of the fans, not only just the Brazilian fans that traveled over there, but, yeah, the Korean fans that are there for seeing Croc, right? Yes. <laughs> and Root. So, uh, that's... Honestly, really great to see. Homefield advantage in some ways, I, maybe. In ways they feed off the energy of the crowd, they'll, generally. They'll be welcomed, I think, with warmer arms to yeah, local fans. Sure. Right? Yeah. yeah. You're going you're gonna to disagree. You're going to argue. No, I was going to say for sure. <laughs> I was going to say the same goes for R7 as well. You yes. know, they got two as well uh, with their solo laner. So, yeah, of course, there is something that the fans can hold on to. It's yeah. just a small yes. I, I really <laughs> okay. didn't have a larger, <laughs> okay. larger yeah, thing to I do add. think they feed off the energy really well. <laughs> We've seen that constantly. So, if they can treat that as a home stage advantage, then that's a plus. Right. So, uh, one last moment, one last thing to talk about now. Uh, Pickums again. Let's go back to most uh, killed champion. How, how are we doing for interview? I see. Still, still delayed. Okay, so we're actually going to move on with this one. Okay. Uh, if we do get to that interview, I will bring back to discussion. Uh, but I will bring it for everyone to watch a little bit later. I'd like to continue our discussion <laughs> talking about PSG versus R7. Well, the highlights are going to be on your screen. I think dominating win for PSG. I think to expectation. Um, that is what I was anticipating seeing coming in. I will say I wanted a little bit more in game one from PSG, but I, I chalked that, that performance up to stage jitters. Yeah, and the player of the series for that one, Maple, just came up clutch in game two on this J. So like, and also on top of that, his uh, flanks on Nico really made it, a t they turned that game around in game one and found a lot of ways to get back into the game. So I'm excited for them. There's way too many players on this team. We didn't even get to talk about Wako um, and Woody because, yes, they had a little bit of a tougher laning phase. But once they start to get more comfortable on stage, then that's multiple threats on that team that if, you know, Maple's not having a good game, Junja's not having a good game, you can look towards Woody, uh, Wako, who's been great domestically, can carry a game. Yeah, but at the same time, I'm not going to lie. I I'm kind of buying into a little bit of your... R7 hype as well. Yeah. Oh, with somebody, I, 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 like know, I know they lost okay. two, okay. but you know, the, yeah. I like what you're selling. Uh, I'm not sure I'm buying yet, but uh, you know, at least the premise of it, I yeah. think they actually had a really good early game. And the reason why they lost in the mid game was just their own setup for these objectives, mm -hmm. the, their own really play style through their summoner spells. Yeah. There was real fights where you just say, Do I have flash up? No? Okay, I'm not fighting then. So, so I, I yeah. think it's going to be curious to see R7 versus Gam again. What I do like about that as well is that I. <laughs> You can look at it from two different perspectives, right? Um, game one, I put more blame on PSG in their early game, and that's yeah. my perspective. I, was like, I, I mean, it's also them. a true perspective. And also, you have to give some credit to R7. I think their early game was better than expected. So both things can be true. The only thing is we'll be able to validate which one is a little bit more indicative of the team's performance and consistency once we see them against other opponents, once we see some more games from them later in the play-ins. And I think this series is great for review for R7 because a, a great example was simply that siege that they had uh, in game one that really screwed them, right? Yeah, the one around mid lane. Maybe, exactly. Yeah. Because they were skipping a few steps. They didn't get solid vision towards the bot side of the map where Nico was coming from. If yeah. they get something down like that, it's an easy thing to identify. Makes them so much stronger going into the next phase, just slowing the game down a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, nice. I, I, <laughs> hey, if he's spitting been, facts, he's spitting facts. Do you want me to day. say it in a different way? I will say as well. I I've actually been wrong on my predictions, like to, but I'll take it. Um, for all the viewers at home, um, I actually just want to compliment both Goldborg and Raz because a lot of the content, a lot of things we come into, obviously is driven by the two of them. And specifically looking at the mid lane matchup, specifically looking at how the teams perform in, in all four teams in both of our series, I think you guys nailed it. And I loved our pre-match discussion about Mary versus Maple. Mm -hmm. You called out Maple as MVP. Maple was talking to Law in our Verizon post-game interview. 
And welcome back to Seoul, SPSG Talent won the first game here at Walls 2023 and I'm joined by legend of the mid lane, Mabel. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy birthday also. Mm. Winning your first game must be nice, but also rejoining PSG after such a long time. You came back to the team in June. How did it feel to come back home? Uh, 原本有一些人就是都是我认识的，所以其实搭配起来没有太过困难。Although uh, I rejoined PSG, but uh, most of our, my teammates are uh, already changed. But also, um, uh, my teammates are, and I are know each other for a long time, so I think we work well. And talking about one specific teammate, I feel like the duo of Maple and Junjia can be one of the deadliest duo we have at Plains, if not at Worlds at all. How is it working with him, and can you tell me more about the synergy between the two of you? 你跟俊佳就账面上看起来很可能是这是入围赛甚至是整个世界赛最致命的组合之一那你自己怎么评价你跟他的联动俊佳的话我觉得他是一个蛮有想法然后攻击性很强的大一选手但是可能第一天吧
Cara, acho que a itemização que eles fizeram, principalmente nos dois carregadores, ficava muito difícil de matar o caçante. Eu acabei conseguindo pegar alguns abates, então eu itemizei muito rápido. Eu acabei que fiquei muito tanque, então eu falei pro meu time. Galera, a gente dá o scaling, nossos carries têm mais DPS, eu tanco mais que o Renekton, então vamos com calma que a gente ganha e deu certo. Uh, because of the itemization that they, like the other players, they ended up having, like it was pretty hard to like to confront the tanks, the tanks and the carriers. And in the other way, like I told my team, like, oh, it's all good, let's do outscaling, guys. E from now on, like, let's try to get an advantage and go for it. All right, confident in the team composition, uh, as I believe. But for me, it showcases how strong Loud is becoming world after world after world. Third time you're participating here today. And I also know that you tied Draven Legend BRTT in the most wins in your region in the CBLO. How do you reflect on your career and the pride of representing CBLO once again at Worlds? Cara, é uma honra ter empatado com ele como o maior jogador. É, eu sei que eu quero... Ainda não vou parar, então eu pretendo ainda ultrapassar ele, mas meu grande objetivo é ir bem no Mundial. Quem sabe dessa vez vai. Eu estou muito confiante, três vezes seguidas, então acho que é agora. Eu diria que é um honor estar em like, uma draw posição com ele. Eu posso dizer agora que eu não estou disposto a parar. Eu não tenho pensamentos sobre parar, então talvez um dia eu possa ir sobre isso. Mas o meu foco agora é apenas like, performar o máximo well uh, as well as i can within the the championship and mm -hmm. perhaps this time we can bring like some bigger difference i'm very confident i think perhaps this is the time and i think you have the revenge matchup coming against psg talon on the next game didn't go so well at msi last time what do you think about the team now that they have a revamped version with maple on the mid lane how do you think it's going to go Acho que eles são um time muito forte, é, não é uma dúvida que todo mundo coloca eles como um dos favoritos do play -in. Só que eu sei que a gente evoluiu bastante, a gente é um time diferente também da MSI, a gente sabe jogar de outras maneiras, outros campeões, então é, eu espero que nossa evolução tenha sido suficiente, eu estou bem ansioso para enfrentar eles. Para ser honesto, eu estou bastante like, ansioso sobre isso. Não há dúvidas que todo mundo diz que eles são muito bons e eles tendem a ser em uma boa posição, com escolhas, mas eu estou muito confiante também com a nossa evolução como time, como nós evoluímos, como nós conseguimos praticar and like learn and evolve with not only like few characters but many other like strategies so I'm pretty like excited well, for the next match. Looking forward to seeing you guys in this matchup. Obrigada for the interview. Uh, Arthur, obrigado. thank you so much for the interview and the translation and back to you guys. Thank you once again, Law. <laughs> Another fantastic interview. Um, two things. Uh, Robo is infectiously happy to yes. listen to. Watching him animate, uh, not understanding a single word he says. I'm just like transfixed. Also, as a shout out, Arthur, your outfit is banging. That's a seriously Damn right great it is. suit. Anyways, let's turn our attention back to the game, okay? Um, great victory here for Loud. Um, sets up the rematch once again um, that we saw at MSI. From what I can remember at this point in time, it was pretty one-sided. I think they got obliterated at MSI. What I think, more importantly, I want to ask it to you, based on what you've seen today, both teams are the 2-0, both teams winning in different ways. Yeah. What do you what do you expect, you know, when you, you look at them facing off against one another? I mean, as much as I had faith in Loud today, that was faith against Gam. I don't have a lot of faith for them going up against uh, going up against beast, PSG. Right? Now I think, and this is the best case scenario you will get out of this series, if the same pace they played with in game one goes up against the same pace that PSG played with in game one, yeah. then it's gonna be a really exciting series. Because yeah. I would say that, that Loud had a really good high tempo gameplay in their first game, and PSG Talent had a very slow tempo in that first game. So if PSG Talent starts out slow and Loud has a habit of doing it fast, then that first game could actually be really monumental. The matchup I'm looking at is Robo versus Aja. I think that Aja is such a good top laner. He kind of gets put on an island at times, gonna put on weak side, but he always shines through. The fans are just amazing. And What's it? Is that um, That's Luffy, Luffy, yeah. Luffy, there we go. <laughs> so amazing, man. So at you right. He's infectious, the fans are infectious. Whenever you see Loud on the stage, any CBL All team on the stage, you just can't help but smile. But I do think what he has said in his interview constantly about the evolution of the teams, he's focusing more on his team, himself. Like, it, sure, going up against PSG, they got slaughtered last time, but hopefully the team really feels good. I think their bot lane's only gotten stronger. I think their overall team fighting looks good. I just want to see him in his solo lane not drop too far behind. That's the only thing that I'm uh, concerned about. All right. Final thoughts before we round out the day, GB. Anything to add? 
I <laughs> agree with him. There we go. I like the sound of that. Forget, do not forget that we are back tomorrow with two more best of threes. It's uh, Flying Oysters taking on DFM. So our Team BDS taking on Team Wales. The ocean thing, not the country. Uh, you'll understand. Tune in tomorrow to watch it. That does it from us here on Day 1 of Worlds 2023. We'll be back same place, same time for more League of Legends and your World Championship. Good night. Goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow. So easy being an analyst. <laughs> <laughs>